Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today, I want to answer a question that I keep getting asked, which is, what have you done to the pufferfish? How's the pufferfish? Is the pufferfish okay? How big is your pufferfish? What else is in with the pufferfish? How are the pufferfish, friends? Let's have a look at the pufferfish. So, this is the pufferfish tank in a bit of a state of dishevelment. I've just cleared off um, mountains of duckweed. You couldn't see through for the duckweed. Uh, very little light was getting into the tank because there was so much duckweed and it seems to have made old Mr Puffer go into a bit of a huff so he's hiding out back there but some of the other inhabitants are around so this is one of two or three bristlenose plecos and there's another one down here and they don't look too bad um, they are very much the forgotten guys of this tank because they're just here to keep control of algae and things like that and they do their job very well. Um, the other inhabitants for this tank are a black ghost knife fish and a Senegalese bicher, bitcher, bishir, Martin. That's the thing about this tank, everyone's quite elusive except for the bristlenose plecos and usually the, the puffer fish. Um, so there's the Baisher there, if you can see him. I think he really enjoys this tank because there are so many hidey holes and places to hang out. Because at the back of the tank there are some clay pots, um, bits of wood, that kind of thing, making some kind of natural-ish types of caves. And then this is usually quite a, a jungly plant. Um, but I've cut most of this away now and cleared it out a little bit just to give a little bit more swimming space so that's probably why they're all a bit shy which means it's a great time for me to try and show you them anyway let's drop in a little bit of food that's normally enough to get a little bit of interest so that's just a bunch of clams as you can see, I usually leave the shells in for quite a while. I'm kind of going for the natural-ish look. But get fed up and clean them up every now and again. Yeah, I think they're just all a bit grumpy because I decided to do some gardening today. As well as clams, I like to feed this tank prawns. Um, I'll quite often chop up maybe a dozen prawns or so and throw them in um, Bloodborns are favourites obviously Vibrobites and even pellets the, the puffer fish has started taking them uh, but the staple food for the puffer anyway is ram's horn snails There we go, starting to wake up now a little bit. I think you can smell the clams, even though the biters nick most of them. Um, when he's on form, this guy is a really good hunter. He's out and about looking for food, looking for me. Like I say, these staple diet is with snails, but as well as that and the other things I've mentioned, I've also got some lizards. And so I have to keep a supply and a stock of crickets and locusts. I usually keep them on top of this tank actually, just for a little bit of heat. Um, and this guy quite likes the locusts, so one had escaped. I noticed that 
flailing about swimming at the top of the water before I could do anything he'd been out and chomped it but good source of protein the tank itself it's just shy of a three foot cube um, it's not going to be this guy's forever tank he's going to get too big he's only maybe four or five six inches at the moment but he will get over a foot hopefully especially the way he eats normally so they'll be going in my big display tank no doubt maybe we'll ask the question do puffer fish live with discus so if I haven't said if you've not been here before this is a haka puffer I've had him since he was the size of a pea puffer um, he's an awesome little fish a fat little fish just like he's fat big owner um, he lives in here with the Senegalese Bitecher and the Black Ghost Knife Fish. It will no doubt come crashing out at any moment. He's just a big clumsy oaf. Um, ideally, and everything you will read will say, if a hack of puffers, they're mean. They need to be kept on their own. And while well, he has chewed through a few tank mates, so smaller fish like guppies and things like that, they won't last long. Um, but so far, with the other inhabitants of this tank, like say, Senegal Bitecher, Black Ghost Knife Fish, a few Bristlenose Plecos, which are all bigger fish. He just kind of ignores them and gets on with his own thing. In terms of filtration for the tank, um, that's one of those spin stream nozzles. That basically the flow from the outlet, it just spins it round and constantly moves it. Keeps things moving and that's sitting on top of an internal sump. Um, just filled with bio home media sponges and that sort of thing. Um, it's quite heavily planted. These Limnophilia sisiflora or whatever they're called, they just they grow like weeds. They sprout up in no time at all. So that internal sump's just filled with bio home sponges, that sort of thing. A little pump at the bottom. It recirculates everything. Right, there's the the bitecher off out and about. Um, like I say, it's very heavily planted. This stuff grows like weeds. It kind of looks after itself, this tank. The, the lighting is one of these Vipar Spectre. It's a marine light that I've just kept over. And of course, I've got Pothos growing out of there. I've got some lucky bamboo growing out the bank as well. Out the back, rather. I think we just picked a bad time to try and film because he's an old grumpy bum at the moment. But it's a nice little look at this tank, even though it is mostly refre reflection. And of course we have the other puffer tank. This is the pea puffer tank. Um, a much smaller affair, both in inhabitants and size of tank as well. And here we've got three pea puffers at the moment. That's, these will be the next things I want to add, is a few more of them. Maybe get that up to about six. Uh, but as well as puffers, there's a whole spaghetti noodle full of coolie loaches. You very rarely see them with the lights on. Um, I know you can see one farting about around here um, but there's, there's probably a dozen in here but they hide in the nooks and the crannies of the rocks and come out at night and scavenge up any uneaten food um, so in this tank we've got coolie loaches, pea puffers or dwarf indian puffers we've got ottos, we've got red cherry shrimp um, and I think that's it really in this one this is really a, a self-sustaining ecosystem there's two of the puffers out Hello, what's going on here? Um, the shrimp, the adult shrimp, are kind of ignored by the puffers the majority of the time. But the little shrimplets that they keep producing make up tasty snacks for the pea puffers. Um, again, it's quite heavily planted, so there's lots of places for the shrimp to hide out. So a few of them make it through and then keep producing foods for the, the pea puffers. A nice little tank to watch. Um, I've been fighting algae with this tank. I'm starting to get it dialed in, uh, but there's probably still a long way to go. And if I'm honest, this one's been. I think I've skipped a couple of water changes on this one, so it needs a bit more attention again. The food for this tank again, we quite rely on this quite a bit. The carry of vibrobites. I think they do really well for a whole multitude of fish. Um, but snails is the main added food. They're really quite small fish so they don't take too many other things. Pellets 
kind of ignore. Um, but bloodworms again, like they carry vibrobites, which that's what they imitate as bloodworms. Um, they are enjoyed immensely. Not all that important that you get um, crustaceans and harder things for the pea puffers because they don't have that beak that needs to be worn down like the Vahaka puffer does. Um, the bigger puffers you do need to give them something a bit hard to wear down that beak and make sure it doesn't cause problems later on. But these guys, not so much. But again, really interested and interesting fish. Most times when I come up to the tank they'll come out and say hello and see what's going on. So I think I just want to up the numbers a little bit and possibly turn this into a bit of a breeding project. And that's it for office tanks, well, office puffer tanks. We've obviously got this tank over here, which is the um, the killifish tank and the cherry shrimp, which is my attempt at aquascaping. That's coming along really well, but no puffers in that. But that's all the tanks I've got in my office. So that's just a little look around my office and the tanks I've got here are mainly the puffers to answer the question for all the people that were asking. Hope that's put your mind at ease. Yes, everything's fine, everything's doing well. Um, if you've got any questions about the puffers or anything in general, by all means leave those in the comments below. So the main takeaway I think is that I'm doing something slightly differently. Uh, the Fahaka puffer in particular, it's meant to be a bit of a, a meaner fish, um, but even though the breed might be mean, each fish has its individual personalities so well. My fish is happily tolerating three, four, five, six tank mates. Yeah, and other fish might not. Um, so bear that in mind before you just go out and blindly copy me. You've got to try these things. I do have quarantine tanks, hospital tanks, spare tanks that if I notice a problem I can get in there, I can whip things out. And, and not everyone's got that. Um, so that might be a bit more of a bloodbath, but it is what it is. If you're interested in puffers, pea puffers is a great place to start because they're really personable fish and um, they're always interested, they're always out and about hunting uh, especially if we've got a, spell, a snail problem, that'll soon be a thing of the past um, but we'll leave it there, that was just a quick update thank you everyone for commenting, watching, liking, subscribing do all that good stuff, if this is your first time here and I'll see you next time, bye bye